friends, uh, welcome to another WSIB Truth Matters with Joe Machado. I hope you enjoyed this uh, long weekend. It's certainly a beautiful weather, uh, really, really hot, which is uh, something that I always appreciate. And hopefully it'll stick around for a, a while longer. Uh, anyway, I'm excited to start this three-part series on uh, getting to know the tribunal, so to speak, um, the Workplace Safety and Insurance Appeals Tribunal. And the reason why I uh, decided to do this three-part series is it's not to give you a sort of uh, deep dive, um, extremely detailed education on how the tribunal works, uh, because obviously it takes a long time to really uh, understand the process and how to work within the process. And that's coming from somebody who, who did it uh, as a, a worker advocate for many, many years. Uh, but I thought it was it would be important for you to learn some of the basic contents that uh, can really help you in understanding um, how the tribunal works and um, some of the important factors that you as a potential uh, appellant uh, should know. Um, even if you have a representative um, handling uh, your case, uh, it's always good to know these things so that you're not only mentally prepared yourself, but you have confidence and you can go to a hearing uh, with that confidence and that can make a world of, the, of difference. So uh, today I'm going to talk about the purpose of hearings at the tribunal, um, at the Workplace Safety and Insurance Appeals Tribunal, and uh, some of the hearing uh, formats uh, that the tribunal has. Um, so first off, the tribunal has the power to review um, all relevant facts in your case um, and they have the power to consider new evidence that you present at the tribunal. What I mean by new evidence is evidence that was introduced at the WSIB previously. And uh, they also have the authority to overrule uh, decisions made by uh, the Workplace Safety and Insurance Board. Um, I put a lot of stock into the tribunal because I have zero faith whatsoever in the Workplace Safety and Insurance Board and their decision-making process. Um, I have no regard for uh, the WSIE's appeals branch. And I don't say this lightly. This comes from over 30 years of experience in dealing with these people and just looking at the total lack of consistency uh, in decision making and how uh, oftentimes uh, decisions are made in an arbitrary manner uh, with no regard for the law or board policies. And when you get to see enough of that uh, coming from the Workplace Safety and Insurance Board and then you look at decisions made by the tribunal uh, dealing with those same issues and how they interpreted the evidence how they applied the policies in the law. And, you know, after a while you sit back and you go, wait a minute, WSIB had this all along. Okay, maybe the case manager or claims adjudicator, as they used to be called, um, didn't have that much experience, um, didn't really understand the law or policies that well, and that's not an excuse that's acceptable in my book. You would think that an appeals resolution officer, somebody who's experienced, knowledgeable, um, would be able to draw on that experience and make decisions that are more in line with policy and, and the act, but they're not. And when you see enough of that, you just lose all faith in the system. So the tribunal may have its own challenges, and I'm not advocating that the tribunal is the perfect place to have your appeal heard. Uh, but I think you're going to get justice there. I think the chance, the probability of getting justice there as opposed to the board is far greater. And the numbers don't lie um, in terms of the thousands of decisions that the uh, tribunal makes and uh, where they grant entitlement to whatever is being appealed. So, um, a tribunal is generally held by a single vice chair or a panel. Um, I've seen both. 
And they have, um, they have the right, the authority to get evidence, to hear submissions in a case. Um, they also have the right and the power to ensure that particip participating parties can cross-question uh, cross uh, witnesses and make sub uh, reply submissions. And so what I mean by that is you may have an appeal where your employer has decided to participate and their uh, representative may have witnesses that they're going to introduce. And so you would have a right or your uh, representative would have a right to cross-reference that witness or sorry, uh, cross-question uh, that uh, witness to ensure that the process is fair and it's balanced. And everybody has an opportunity to say what they need to say. It also allows the vice chair and the panel to ask questions uh, and to seek clarifications and to obtain additional information that they think um, is necessary to, to form uh, and to arrive at a just and fair decision that's based on the law. They ultimately have a, an obligation to, to be fair uh, in the adjudication process and, but they can only do that by examining all of the available evidence and then applying board policies and the law to ensure that um, it's a decision that's based on fairness and the law as well. Um, and they also try in every case to make uh, timely decisions because they, uh, they understand that injured workers wait a long time to have their case heard at the tribunal. And it's not because of their lack of resources, it's because the WSIB makes it so. Every now and then they come up with a policy or rewrite a policy or do some kind of shit that causes a delay in their own decision-making process, which then eventually gets transferred into the tribunal. I've seen this happen tons of times over 30 years. And it just seems like every time the tribunal is getting to the point where they're caught up, the Workplace Safety and Insurance Board just does some stupid, asinine bullshit to cause the whole system to go into backlog again. Um, it's mind-boggling. So um, some of the hearing formats um, that are available um, uh, at the tribunal and this is how they choose to hear a particular case. So there's an uh, oral hearing, which, which can be done in person. Uh, there's an oral hearing that can be done by video conference. Uh, there's an oral hearing that can be done by teleconference um, with one or multiple people on the line. Uh, there are also oral hearings that can be done in mixed format. So an example would be one of the parties is actually attending the hearing in person and the other party is attending the hearing via teleconference or video conference. Uh, and this happens uh, occasionally when one party is ill and can't travel or another party is in a remote area of, of, the, uh, of the province and they, there's a weather situation and they can't travel to the hearing. Um, so there's reasons why that happens, but the tribunal does try to accommodate every potential scenario because they want to move things along. Um, and then there's hearings that are done in writing, and that's where submissions are made in writing, um, and the tribunal reviews those submissions and then renders the hearing in, uh, in a decision in writing. Um, so... Um, the process of, of how you want to select your hearing, uh, it's pretty straightforward. So appellants uh, must indicate their preference for the format of their hearing um, on the Notice of Appeal form, so NOA. The Workplace Safety and Insurance Appeals Tribunal will review the NOA uh, and the issues on appeal. Uh, they'll make an initial determination of the hearing format as to whether it's going to be an oral hearing in person or by video conference or one of the others that I just alluded to. Um, WSIB uh, WSIAD staff will identify the hearing format and the issue 
um, or issues on the appeal letter and uh, WSIAD staff will confirm it in a uh, hearing ready letter. So it's one of the other things about the tribunal, it's very process oriented. Uh, they wanna make sure that every party is properly informed of the, of the process. So every party has due process, has been given the opportunity for due process and then there's no issues down the road uh, whereby a request for a reconsideration can be made. So they're usually very thorough in that regard, which I appreciate that very much. Uh, the vice chair or the panel assigned to adjudicate the appeal, uh, they will decide whether the hearing format, they ultimately make that decision, and they'll let WSIAD staff know uh, if, the, if the format should be changed. And then the WSIAD staff will notify uh, the uh, uh, parties involved in the appeal of the diff if it, there's a different um, hearing format that's needed um, and they may request additional information at that time. The um, oral hearings, what they do in essence uh, is a number of things. So, and this is important for you to know this. So it gives the appellant an opportunity to present their opening statements. So in other words, an overview of why they're there and what their case is all about. I usually recommend that those be uh, brief and yet detailed. So be succinct. I'm here to gain entitlement for my left shoulder um, as a secondary condition to my right shoulder injury that took place on such and such a date. And I'm gonna rely on such and such information, medical reports and whatnot, to be able to demonstrate that my uh, secondary condition should be entitled or accepted in the claim. So something that straightforward, but yet very specific, very direct. So that the, the, the panel, the vice chair, they get a, a good understanding from you. And I know that's been noted in the appeal documentation, but um, it's important for you to be able to present that again. Uh, it also gives the appellant an opportunity to make submissions uh, to present uh, testimony, to cross-examine, uh, uh, qu uh, cross-question uh, witnesses. Um, if um, there are submissions being made, uh, to have an opportunity to make reply submissions um, and, uh, and to present closing statements um, orally for the vice chair or the panel. And so that's an opportunity to recap all of the information that was presented and then uh, make a, a statement as to why entitlement should be granted uh, and also refer to any sections of the, of the law and policies that support the argument. And one of the things that I see, or in my experience, didn't see happen uh, very often, but I think it's very important to do, and that is to always look for one or two or even three uh, tribunal decisions, uh, jurisprudence, where there were decisions made in the same or similar issue that you're trying to uh, obtain entitlement for, and it basically demonstrates that uh, and strengthens your argument that there is jurisprudence, that there is consensus among vice chairs and other panels um, on that issue that you are presenting. Um, so the um, oral hearing also gives the panel and uh, the vice chair an opportunity to ask questions of uh, the parties, whether it be the employer uh, or any witnesses that are uh, providing testimony uh, or a medical uh, expert that's also providing uh, text, uh, testimony or uh, witnesses to the event uh, in, 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 the, in, in the situation where you're trying to get entitle, gain entitlement uh, for an injury and perhaps ascertain the um, description of what took place. 
Um, so it gives the panel and the uh, vice chair opportunity to ask questions as well. Uh, and lastly, everyone who testifies will be required to make an affirmation and tell the truth, uh, nothing but the truth, and so on and so forth. So that pretty much uh, covers this um, sort of opening video to getting to know the uh, tribunal. And so tomorrow's video, I'm going to be dealing with oral hearing format uh, descriptions. So I'm going to go a little bit into more detail as to how each one of those, those formats take place and how it's conducted. Um, and also uh, how to file an objection to the hearing format. Um, the tribunal may make a decision that they want to go with a particular format. You may disagree with it. Uh, and so I'm going to talk about how you can object to that. Okay, friends. So I hope that you um, uh, learned something from this video. Uh, you can also go back and refer, or refer to it if you find yourself in this situation to sort of refresh your memory a little bit. Um, and I'm also going to reference um, the, uh, the uh, tribunal's most recent practice uh, direction, uh, which will provide more details about what I'm covering uh, in this three-part series so that you can refer to that document as well. All right, friends. So once again, um, if you're not already a subscriber to my channel, I invite you to become a subscriber. It's free. Um, please hit the notification bell, and that way you get notified each time that I come out with a new video. And please share my videos with others. Uh, there's a lot of people in this province uh, who are claiming benefits or appealing and, uh, and who need help. And so um, I started this channel about five months ago. Uh, to impart over 30 years of experience uh, to help injured workers deal with the WSIB, with their appeals, and hopefully um, tip, tip the scale a little bit in their favor. If you have any questions about this, uh, about this particular issue, uh, feel free to give me a, uh, send me an email at joemachado at wsibsettlements.com. Uh, let me know what your question is, and I'll respond to that. And if there's a particular topic that you would like me to cover in one of my videos in the future, uh, send me an email and let me know what that is and I'll uh, work it into one of my videos. Friends, once again, thank you for taking the time to watch this video. And as always, take care now.